Lions in Indiana this afternoon. The Indiana Hoosiers play for a share of the Big Ten regular season title as they host the Northwestern Wildcats. Hi, everybody. Wayne Larrabee along with Sean Morris. Great to have you with us. Let's take a quick look at the Big Ten standings. Both of these teams are trying to gain some momentum going into the tournament. But you look at Wisconsin, Michigan State, Illinois, they've been hot. Chance for a four-way tie at the top, Wayne, although Wisconsin has already secured themselves the top seed in the upcoming Big Ten uh, tournament. Indiana needs a win here today to grab a share of the conference championship. Well, these two teams met in Evanston to the open of the Big Ten season. A game won by Indiana and the coming out party for Jared Odo. Jared Odo, huge for the Hoosiers, 16 points, 15 rebounds, very active on the offensive glass. He really held down the fort until some timely three-point shooting allowed Indiana to win on the road in the league opener. Well, if you take a look at the Northwestern Wildcats, and their dilemma is scoring. And they have struggled in their last two games to put points on the board, very simply. That's putting it very mildly, Wayne. <laughs> Northwestern has done an outstanding job defensively, as they have all year. But their offensive game has really abandoned them, haven't been able to get a lot of easy shots. That's reflected in their low field goal shooting percentage. Foul shooting has also been a struggle for them all year. Dane Fife, a Michigan native, playing his final home game as an Indiana Hoosier. Seniors Day at Assembly Hall, coming up next. You don't need to be a sanitation engineer to know garbage when you see it. Looks like you'll be folding faster than the Argentine Army in 82. Oh, well. Buck up, soldier. The night is young. Lucky for you, there's also a light way to live. The high life. Mercedes, BMW, Suzuki. Under the conditions of a recent Insurance Institute for Highway Safety 40 mile per hour crash test, each of these SUVs received the highest overall rating of good. Yet the Suzuki XL7 costs nearly $20,000 less. And that makes the XL7 not just a safe choice, but a smart one. Lease a Suzuki XL7 today for just $249 per month with only $19.49 to start. Today's Big Ten game is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. United States Army, an army of one. Cooper Tire, proud to be the official tire of the Big Ten Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. And by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Wayne Larrabee, Sean Morris, welcome back to Assembly Hall. Quick look at the starting lineups before we get underway today. And for the Northwestern Wildcats, Blake and Hardy up front along with Jennings. Young and Drayton, the backcourt tandem. Indiana with Jeffries and Odell down low. And then three guards, three snipers out of the arc. Coverdale, Fife, and Hornsby, three of the best shooting guards in the Big Ten. Bill Carmody in his second season in Northwestern. His team has already won more games this year than they did all of last year and are on the verge of tying the school record for conference season wins. And Mike Davis in his second season here at Indiana. And what a job he's done. He has this program well at the edge of its first Big Ten basketball championship on the men's side since 1993. We're underway. Northwestern in the traveling black with the purple trim. Indiana the home white. Crimson and green. Bill Bova, Tom Rucker, Dennis Bracco, the officials. Mike Davis talked about Indiana defensively, that you've got to be patient when you play Northwestern. Hardy from the outside. Important that one of the big men hit a three-point field goal early to kind of open up the back door a little bit. That's the typical fare for Northwestern. Indiana really sagging off, Wayne, trying to take away those cuts, bumping the cutters, not allowing anything easy going toward the rim. Hardy down low, spinning on Jeffries, traveled on the play. It's 
been a long time since Northwestern won here in Bloomington but recall earlier this season Wisconsin ended a long streak a losing streak here to Tim Young the pilfer and cannot finish Tavares Hardy gathers it in and has nowhere to go Jennings coming back for it now they set it up again no score early going first quarter first half there's the cut by Young. Nice feed from Hardy. The nice. big men can do two things, Sean. They can shoot and they can pass. Nice pass off the dribble. Didn't have to pick it up to deliver. Odell on the other end gets it right back on an Indiana secondary break. Poor transition defense by Northwestern. Did a very poor job of going from offense to defense, allowing Odell to get behind and finish. Jennings out high. To Tim Young pulls up. And the rebound, Coverdale. Coach Davis said Tom Coverdale really is the silent key to this team. From the outside, it won't go for Hornsby. Nice little setup in transition. Hornsby using the screen by five, just not able to knock it down. Got a good look at it. Tying it to a piece. Blake off a screen by Drayton. Winston Blake and Coach Carmody said earlier today that he is a very important uh, cog in Northwestern's plans. They need to get him involved and get him shooting early. He's third in the conference, weighing in three-point field goals made per contest. Fife unable to handle that pass as again Indiana running secondary break. Blake off of Dane Fife and Fife able to keep it in play. Feeds Coverdale. Both of Indiana's early baskets, Wayne, have come as a result of transition. One, Odell got behind the line of defense by Northwestern here in the open floor. Blake tries to save it, leads to the conversion for Coverdale. On the drive through the lane, Tavares Hardy. Aggressive move by the senior there, Wayne. He took the contact and was able to reload and finish. Putting three minutes of play, first half. Odell had, as we mentioned, his coming out party against this Northwestern team. Fife off the mark out of the corner. Bill Carmody will play a little 2-3 matchup zone because he wants to get people into the corners. Indiana gets a lot of their three-point shooting in the corners. To the right hand, Jennings, nicely done. Strong start for Northwestern here. And the big men asserting themselves offensively. We saw the move by Hardy, the possession before. Here, a hook shot that would have made George Mikan proud. Yes, indeed. Boy, you go back a long oh. way, don't you? I tell you, they. I can't remember what I had for dinner yesterday, but I can remember George Mikan's hook shot. <laughs> yes. Tipped away from behind by Hardy, knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to Indiana. Up off the bench, first substitution of the afternoon. Jatim Young comes out and into the lineup. Jason Burke, a junior out of Plano, Texas. Northwestern, a hot start from the field in the early going. Boy, in Indiana just not able to get in any kind of sink in their half court set so far in the early going. Their two baskets have come off transition. Coverdale, deep three. It's another thing Bill Carmody mentioned. He says, you know, the Indiana shooters, you don't just guard out to the line. You've got to go well beyond the three-point line. Nice steal here by Coverdale. On the run, Hornsby. And the rebound, Jennings. Indiana wants to run, and early offense is what they're looking for here. Northwestern on the other end. They're going to make it play patient. So many times teams talk about the necessity, and rightfully so, of being patient offensively. But when you play Northwestern, you have to be patient defensively yes, you because do. they're going to make you work the clock on the defensive end anywhere from 25 to 30 seconds. Cover now forces the issue, has it blocked down low. Nice play by Collier Drayton to knock it out of bounds. And we come to our first break of the afternoon. Strong start for Northwestern. Certainly on offense, but on defense as well as Collier Drayton gets the drive of Tom Coverdale. Mercedes, BMW, Suzuki. Under the conditions of a recent Insurance Institute for Highway Safety 40 mile per hour crash test, each of these SUVs received the highest overall rating of good. Yet the Suzuki XL7 costs nearly $20,000 less. And that makes the XL7 not just a safe choice, but a smart one.
Lease a Suzuki XL7 today for just $249 per month with only $19.49 to start. Dear sir, thank you for changing my son's life. He has said that if he makes it through basic training, he'll never be afraid of anything. In my proudest moment, I will watch my son march across that field with his head held high. Thank you for bringing out the best in my child. Graduation is just the beginning. Log on only at GoArmy.com. People want to win. You well, know, don't get there with milk and cookies. On Sunday, March 10th. I've never had a team play scared. What the hell are you scared of? The first original motion picture from ESPN. I had to sit around for a year with a losing record? I'm not going to let you people do that to me. Brian Dennehy is Bobby Knight. Don't you kids get it? Playing my game is what got you here. A season on the brink. Premieres Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. A lot of emotion in this building today. It is senior day. That's very important at a school with this kind of basketball tradition. But they also have a piece of the Big Ten championship at stake. A win by Indiana would tie them with Wisconsin, and they do no worse than share the Big Ten title. Which will be quite an accomplishment in Coach Mike Davis' second year at the helm of this Indiana program. And Wayne, I have to believe that during that timeout, he had to emphasize the importance of Jared Jeffries touching the ball on the offensive end of the floor. He's been a non-factor. So much of their offense runs through him. He has to get his hands on the basketball. One change in the lineup. Jeff Newton comes on for Indiana. Jeffrey's trying to post down low. Jennings doing a pretty good job on him so far. And they're sagging back with Jason Burke as well defensively on Jeffries. From the outside, Odell for three. And the rebound secured by Jennings away from Jeff Newton. Nice job of blocking out right there by Northwestern. Hardy did a fantastic job of finding and putting a body on the Indiana offensive player. Collier Drayton penetrating on Jeffries. Odell secures the rebound. Boy, he's become quite a player over the course of this conference season for Indiana. Northwest is showing a little bit different look here defensively. And here they go into Jeffries. Jeffries trying to go back door on that pass to Newton, and it's knocked out of bounds by the Wildcats. But Wayne, even though he struggled right there to make something happen offensively, what you notice is the fact that once he caught the ball down there on the block, it forced Northwestern to react defensively. They had to run a double team at him. Phil Bova, Tom Rucker discussing something at the baseline. There was no call in terms of foul. Indiana basketball. A.J. Moye is in the game now for Indiana. Jeffries takes the pass way out front. Coverdale sets up the two play for the Hoosiers. On this trip down the floor, Jeffries has been able to touch the ball twice. Time winding down to the shot clock. Coverdale deep three. Blake chases down. Northwestern basketball. Wildcats by five. Jennings, tough shot, and one! Well, we've seen him hit a George Mikan-esque uh, hook shot, and now we see the fadeaway jumper, and Newton picks up the foul. Good, strong offensive move. Locates the defender, fades away, which is always a risk against a shot blocker like Newton, but Jennings able to extend at 6'11 and finish. Two times he's touched the ball around the rim. It's been very productive for Northwestern. Five points, Aaron Jennings in the early going. Six minutes into this first half, the crowd getting a little restless here in Bloomington. Moye penetrates. Got hooked on the play and foul. Good recognition by Moye, Wayne. Indiana almost been exclusively a perimeter shooting team in the half court set. So the only two baskets have come on layups in transition. Boy, really the first Hoosier to attack Northwestern off the dribble and force them to react. Well, you know, and again, they've been unable to get the ball, at least consistently, into Jared Jeffries on the block. So Northwestern hasn't had to double down or rotate the defense in any way. And, and you know, the other thing, Sean, is that Indiana has gone for early offense on most of their breaks. Two at the free throw line by A.J. Moye, the sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. Kyle Hornsby up off the Hoosier bench. He comes on for Dane Fife. 
The Wildcats have surprisingly doubled up the Hoosiers in the first six minutes plus of this game. Nice play, Coverdale to knock it away. Coverdale on the other end. Jeffrey's trying to post quickly, and he does against Jennings. Jumps into the lane to the right hand. It's short. Tavares Hardy the rebound. And you still have to wonder, because the ankle is so important for being explosive, and that's such a big part of Jeffrey's game, how much that injury limits his ability to really finish at the rim. Well, he has not been able to get through a full practice since the injury, and he did not go a full practice yesterday. Blake going back door. Hardy! A sliver of an opening in that back door, but just enough to get it through to Tavares Hardy. He's got six. Northwestern by eight and a turnover, Indiana. Burke to Blake, the pull-up three, ring it up. His second three-pointer of this first half, and the Northwestern Wildcats lead it by 11. Well, Northwestern has really been efficient on the offensive end of the floor. Second time in the early going. The first time it was Hardy that delivered the pass. Here he's the recipient of it. And then in defensive transition, the poke from behind by Burke allows Blake to run the right side of the floor and knock down that three. So Northwestern out to a very good start. Indiana, as you said early, has been unable to really get into any sync or rhythm offensively, Sean. And in the half-court sets, they've been settling way too quickly, in my opinion, for three-point shots, not really forcing Northwestern to react. The one time that they did was on the dribble penetration by Moye, and they were rewarded with two foul shots. Again, in the loss the other night to Illinois, the Hoosiers trailed by as many as 14 in that game before cutting the deficit down to two with three minutes, 11 seconds to go. But Mike Davis did not figure on playing from off the pace here at home on Seniors. Day. No, and I think he's probably right now, in addition to emphasizing some patience on the offensive end, defensively as well, because when they're trying to jump those passing angles and passing lanes, that's when the back door has presented itself, and Northwestern has done a solid job of exploiting that. From the arc, Indiana, one of the top three-point shooting teams in the Big Ten. But yet to get on track in that category. Jeffries in the corner. Coverdale out front. Steal on the passing play to the wing. And that is four turnovers now for Indiana as Collinger Drayton makes the pilfer. Very headsy play by the senior. He read that all the way, stepped right into the passing lane. Here's Drayton. Jennings comes up short on that hook shot. Jeffries the rebound. Coverdale out of the backcourt. Hornsby trying to deliver to Newton down low and another turnover, Indiana. Five on the Hoosiers in the first eight minutes of this game. And right now, Wayne, you get the sense that somebody from Indiana is trying to make a big play instead of making the solid basketball play. Make the extra pass and reverse it. No need to try to thread the needle right there. Burke out in the air with nowhere to go until Blake was able to bail him out. Jennings up high, looking for the cutter at the back door, and that time it wasn't open. Good coverage on the cutter. They're trying to hit Drayton down low, but Coverdale was right there to defend. Indiana trailing big at home in the early going. It's staying focused on the ultimate goal. It's never wavering from a rigorous, time-tested investment strategy. It's knowing a highly disciplined approach can result in a winning performance. The American Century Value Funds. It's what we call American dedication. American Century Investments. Contact us or your investment professional. Mercedes, BMW, Suzuki. Under the conditions of a recent Insurance Institute for Highway Safety 40 mile per hour crash test, each of these SUVs received the highest overall rating of good. Yet the Suzuki XL7 costs nearly $20,000 less. And that makes the XL7 not just a safe choice, but a smart one. Lease a Suzuki XL7 today for just $249 per month with only $19.49 to start.
Cooper Tire is proud to be the official tire of the Big Ten Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. Why the Hurricanes wrapping things up against Virginia Tech? James Jones, the offensive stickback, just like uh, Sean Morris used to do at Northwestern, huh? 37-25, Canes on top of the Hokies, guys. And Mike, he still has those hops. There's no question about that. The only hops I have nowadays come in a bottle. <laughs> well, you had a couple of those last night. I won't say how many. Six turnovers today so far for Indiana. They average 13 per game. So six in the first eight minutes, a, an unusually high number for the Hoosiers. Plus they're over five from the arc, and they are the leading percentage team from three-point land in the conference. Good look, fight. First triple of the day for Indiana. And that was really the first time, Wayne, that in the half-court set, Indiana was patient. And even though they didn't use dribble penetration, they used ball reversal. That allowed the spot up three from five. Young on the cut, blocked away by Jeffries. Fife pulls up at the arc to Jeffries on the block to finish. He was fouled from behind. Jason Burt guilty of the foul, helping out his first. And it started on the defensive end for Indiana, Wayne. When you're playing the leading shot blocking team in the Big Ten Conference, you can't go up soft. Watch how Jatim Young goes up. He doesn't take it up strong with his shoulder to the rim. That allows Jeffries to roll, rotate over, block the shot, lead to the transition opportunity. Jeffries missing out his first of the line. Bill Carmody said of Jared Jeffries, said this is the best player in our conference when he's healthy. And in fact, talk about versatility. Carmody said he's the best defender. Obviously, he brings an awful lot to the party. From an offensive standpoint, he was leading the conference in scoring prior to his injury. And he makes his teammates better, Wayne. Because of his presence down on the block, teams have to show doubles, double teams, allowing three-point shooters like five to Coverdale to spot up. Furthermore, he's an excellent passer, and he can put the ball on the floor and beat you off the dribble if he has to. Have we missed anything? It's pretty good. <laughs> it's not bad. I think he could play. Knocked out of bounds, going to belong to Northwestern here at the baseline. 12 to go on the shot clock. Northwestern leading by seven. Out of the corner, good look there, and it rims out for Tavares Hardy. Coverdale unable to handle, but Perry does. Donald Perry, a true freshman. Fight for three. Young the rebound, taking it away from Jeffries. So Tim Young is plain tough on the boards. And now it's Northwestern that needs to reestablish its patience offensively because Indiana is really picking up the tempo on the defensive end, contesting not only the passing angles, which you see right there, on a poor decision by Blake. Jared Jeffries off the dribble to finish. And an offensive foul on the Indiana star. That took some testosterone if you're Blake to rotate over and take that punch because the 6'10 Jeffries had a full head of steam coming right at you. But Blake makes up for a poor passing decision by not giving up on the play. You see number three coming into your picture, rotates over, gets his feet set, and takes the punch. Halfway through, first half. Northwestern has led pretty much the route. Look at the Indiana extend that defense, Sean, even with the big people out to the arc and beyond. To Tim Young, so strong down low. Hardy trying to clear. Gets Jennings an open look for three. Coverdale the rebound. Indiana on the run, they've got numbers. Five for three. Jennings the rebound. Hoosiers yet to really find the mark from the arc yet. Just one three-point field goal so far in the game. Jennings down low. Works on Jeffries. Jennings steps away. Nicely done. Boy, he's made a couple of good moves inside today. And Wayne, Aaron Jennings almost filling the role that Jared Odell did for Indiana in the first game. Stepping up offensively in an unexpected force. Newton has played so well of late inside. He got great position on Jennings. Jennings uh, left with no recourse but to foul. 
to deny Newton the, the uh, easy two inside, but it should be pointed out Newton's made 15 consecutive free throws. Coming watch into watch where game. Newton catches the ball, Wayne. Yep. Now, if you let a guy of any kind of talent and ability particularly someone of athletic ability like Newton has, you let him catch the ball that near the rim, you might as well call Quincy because you're dead. <laughs> Yesterday at the end of practice, they, uh, Mike Davis looked up to a crowd of about 20, 30 people watching practice and said, uh, uh, this is the one to extend the streak. Does he make it or not? And everyone said, well, he makes it. And he calmly stepped up and knocked it down. Try to put a little pressure on the young man, get him ready for today. He's made 17 in a row. And whatever they get from him offensively, from Newton to the Hoosiers, it only augments what he brings on the defensive end of the floor. He leads the conference in block shots, very athletic along that front line. Indiana has crept back to within seven once again. Blake off a quick screen. Newton the rebound, Indiana ball. Donald Perry back the other way. And Perry can also get in the lane and create off the dribble as well. Odell inside, leans in for two. And you can tell the last three or four times down the floor, Indiana making a concerted effort to get inside. First it was with Jeffries there, it's Odell. And when Tim Young is hobbling a little bit on this right side, watch him, he's favoring his right leg. Blake. Tried to save it off of Dane Fife, but for the second time on a play like that, Fife keeps it in play. And on the other end for three. Bring it up. Well, it's getting away from the Northwestern Wildcats. The Hoosiers have found some rhythm. Timeout Northwestern with 7.48 to go in this first half. Way Northwestern. Not able to stop Indiana going inside. Newton, the possession before, went to the foul line. There it's Odell who spots up. And by going inside, it opens up the outside. We talked about the importance of that for Indiana. And there it's Fife that's the beneficiary. Jatim Young, meanwhile, heading toward the Northwestern dressing room. It looked like an injured left ankle. 13-2 run by IU in the last 4.45. And Wayne, Jatim Young injured his, just above his right hip in the game against uh, Penn State on the road a couple of weeks ago. Had been playing with a little bit of stiffness, but he was really hobbled as he headed off the floor. Drayton, here's Winston Blake. Inside Hardy had a whistle before the shot. Got a foul against Indiana. Phil Bova stops the play. I think they got the hand check on Odo. Got a break of the action with 7.34 left to go. First half, Indiana gets right back into it. As you know, a large valve area makes for good breathing. That's why Volkswagen's Enhanced Turbo uses three intake valves and two exhaust valves to provide better fuel air filling and improve gas discharge. Oh. Oh. Okay. He's saying that the Volkswagen Turbo gets good gas mileage. And it's fast. Now, let's discuss the intake valve camshaft timing. Volkswagen's Enhanced Turbo technology. It's not rocket science. Well, it is, sort of. At Advance Auto Parts, we believe in doing it yourself. So we made this commercial ourselves. We had Florence here check out the prices of our competitors versus ours. Do you have the results? But first, Florence, would you ever lie to millions of Americans who really want to believe that someone on TV is capable of telling the truth? Never. Go. Advance is still the queen of low prices. <laughs> queen, Florence? As long as I'm here. Queen's fine. We weren't technically a garage band since we practiced in a barn. Three years, seven drummers, one groupie. And we never get tired of talking about the whole thing. Introducing AT&T Unlimited. $19.95 a month for unlimited long-distance calls to any of AT&T's 50 million residential long-distance customers. Make all the calls you want, whenever you want. Plus, it's just seven cents a minute to anyone else. We still call each other all the time, but we have one rule. No singing. Call 1-800-REACH-OUT to enroll. 
And 11-2 Indiana run has fired up the band and gotten the Hoosiers right back into it. Let's take a look at a Suzuki top performer. And he has won Jared Jeffries, the sophomore out of Bloomington North High School here in Bloomington, Indiana. What a performer he has been. So versatile. You mentioned his ability to score in a variety of ways. But when you talk about a top performer, I think about a guy that makes his teammates better, and that young man does just that. Find out who the top performers of the season are as Suzuki presents ESPN, the magazine's college basketball awards during Final Four week in Atlanta. Northwestern resumes offensively, and they've been in a bit of a dry spot. Drew Long off the bench. Newton the rebound. Indiana chance to tie or take the lead. Remember, they're the best three-point shooting team in the Big Ten. Coverdale looking for Oda. Odell solo. And a foul coming up on Tavares Hardy. So Hardy picks up his first personal. Indiana clears out, allowing the isolation for Odell. Good job of being patient by the senior right there. Located the defense, did, saw that there was no double team coming, could make the move assertively. Foul before the shot. Coverdale dealing on long. Odell on the block again. Newton from the weak side gets fouled on the putback. So now you see the Wildcats who in the early going, Sean, appear to be a step quicker, are a step behind. And Indiana goes right back to the well. We saw it was Hardy that had to give the foul the previous possession. Here they sense the mismatch with Blake guarding Odell. He's not able to convert, but as a result of that rotation defensively, it allows Newton a clean path to the rim. Jason Burke picks up his second personal foul, and Newton misses at the free throw line. Ends a streak of 17 in a row. Tim Young back on the bench. I imagine they just retape that ankle. And Jeff Newton, meanwhile, starts another streak of the line. Inside of seven minutes to go, first half. Northwestern hanging on by the slimmest of margins. Hardy against Odell. Hardy across the lane. Spot up for Drew Long, and he misses another open jump. Northwestern gambling in the backcourt. Hoosiers have numbers. Newton inside, knocked away in a foul. It's on Jason or uh, Winston Blake. Very, very pretty by Indiana. <laughs> Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, along with Sean Morris. I'm Wayne Larevy. The Northwestern Wildcats and the Indiana Hoosiers going at it. Jeff Newton at the free throw line with a chance to tie the game. It's been a long road back for Indiana. The Hoosiers have trailed by as many as 11 in this first half. Splits a pair at the line. Hardy seals off for the rebound. Both of these teams have come off tough losses. Northwestern at home to Illinois, then on the road the other night at Minneapolis. Indiana at Michigan State and Illinois. Burke for three. And the Wildcats needed that one. They were sitting on 17 for the better part of 15, 10 minutes, it seemed like. Nice job by Burke of coming off that little bit of a rub screen. Caught the ball, ready to shoot it. Perry wants to go down low to Newton. Newton with a tough catch. Oh, Coverdale poked away from behind by Drake. Jason Burke feeds Drayton, and Drayton is slammed into the uh, basket standard by Dane Fife, who's not afraid to take a tough foul. Well, it's been Indiana that, by and large, Wayne has been more effective going from defense to offense, but watch, watch the defensive play right there by Drayton. The knock from behind, open floor. Fife's going to say, hey, big fella, you're going to have to learn from the strike. So Collier Drayton. Leads the team in assists. And now gets his first point of the afternoon. He had just one point, 0 for 5 shooting at Minnesota. Bill Carmody mentioned that he felt unlike the Illinois game, where his team did not get very good shots. They got good shots at Minnesota, they just didn't knock him down. In a lane violation by Indiana, I think it was Newton on the inside position, Wayne, will allow Drayton to shoot another one. 
To Tim Young, a retaped ankle, back into the lineup. And he replaces Drew Long. Meanwhile, Coverdale and Newton get a break, and Hornsby back on, along with Jared Jeffries. A lot of speculation. Jared was asked yesterday if this would be his final game at Assembly Hall as a Hoosier, and he said it's impossible to be able to tell that right now. Missed free throw, rebounded by Jared Odell. Odell, one of two seniors. There's Dane Fife, the other. Fife against Blake. Trying to take him off the dribble. Ten to go on the shot clock. This is Jeffries. Nice touch. Three for Jared Jeffries, his first field goal of the game. And that's an example of his versatility. Not because just he made the shot, Wayne, but because of the fact that he can't put the ball on the floor. It doesn't allow a defender to completely close out. There's the back cut. Nice feed. The finish by Winston Blake and Tavares Hardys. Executing that feed very well. Blake now with eight points. So the visitors from Evanston leading it by four. Inside of five minutes to go. Donald Perry for three. Drayton. Knocks it off of Indiana out of play, and whoa, Phil Boba apparently <laughs> made the wrong call and now corrects himself quickly. It will be Northwestern ball. Take a look right here. The defender five turns his head. That's all Winston Blake needs to go right to the rim. And if you're Indiana on the offense, has been very successful going inside you don't want that shot for Perry from the corner very successful going inside to either Jeffries or Newton Indiana just 33 percent from the field Hoosiers came in sixth in shooting percentage in the Big Ten overall Hardy out of the corner wouldn't go that time for Burke Hardy put back now with four from the field and eight points and again Northwestern building a six-point advantage inside of four minutes to go first half five quick delivery inside Jeffries this is what Mike Davis has talked about he says the difference with Indiana and Northwestern is that Indiana must get early scoring down low in the post to open up the outside. Northwestern looks to get scoring from the rim, from the arc early in ball games to open up the backdoor cuts. Stretch the defense. That's what Northwestern is looking to do. Burke down low on a post-up move. Wild shot there. Had nowhere to go. Jeffries solid defensively. Perry on the penetration to the left hand, high off the glass. Collier Drayton on the run has a two-on-two -two with Blake. Now he pulls up and <laughs> is surrounded by Hoosiers. Not the most opportune place to kill your dribble. The Wildcats will run some offense. Coming up on three minutes to go, first half. Northwestern by four. Jatim Young three ball. Not that time. Jared Odell up high for the rebound. Mike Davis wants the two play for Indiana. Jeffries up high. We're really trying to free up those shooters along the baseline with some screens by Odell. Dane Fife out front for three. Heel of the rim. Jeffries the rebound. And here's Hornsby for three. Wayne, and if you're Northwestern, you have to know where Hornsby is. You have to jam it. If you jam Hornsby and make him put the ball on the floor, you've severely limited his effectiveness. He's a catch-and-shoot guy. Jatim Young to get it back for three. No. Way too quick in the shot yep. clock for Northwestern. Poor decision right there by Young. Coming up on two minutes to go, first half. Indiana trailing by one. Go right in there. To Jeffries on the block. Jeffries gets it back. Again. And one. Well, it's not coming easy for the Hoosiers, but they will not be outworked here today. Once again, Indiana making a concerted effort to go inside. Jeffrey's not able to convert the first time, nor the second, but he stays with it, takes the hack from Blake, chance for a three-point play. And he gets it. 
Eight points, seven, four rebounds for Jared Jeffries. We've got a break in the action just under two minutes to go. Hornsby's first from the yard, and the Hoosiers take the lead. Here we see that the piston stroke is longer than the cylinder bore. And turbo, this long stroke design is coupled with a compact combustion chamber for good mid-range RPM power. Mm, I think he means that when you're out on the freeway and you're trying to pass a truck and you need the extra power, you're going to get it with this turbo. And now, let's compare short stroke... Volkswagen's enhanced turbo technology. It's not rocket science. Well, it is, sort of. We don't doubt the billions. It's the serve part we have trouble with. It's real. Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. I've ended up getting a lot done today. Hello? Great. Because I didn't have to sit home and wait for my new refrigerator. With H.H. Gregg delivery, the wait is over. With H.H. Gregg's exclusive 40-minute call-ahead delivery, we'll call you wherever you are to let you know we're on the way. Same day, next day, any day. H.H. Gregg, welcome to the revolution in delivery. battle from Tucson, Arizona. Cal, Jason Gardner. Nice ball fake, and he still hits the three. And right now it's 49-30. Cats on top of Cal. Wayne? Great year out of the Pac-10, Mike. I tell you what, they've played some great basketball out there. Coming up at halftime, the American Century Halftime Report from Sports Center in game. Penn State, Purdue highlights. Top 25 scores and highlights. First half stats. All coming up with Mike Gleason. American Century Halftime Report from the Sports Center in-game studio. Northwestern now trailing by two. Drew Long back into the lineup for the Wildcats. In place of Jatim Young. Blake, they need him to come to the four. On the rebound battle, it's going to be against Tavares Hardy. And Hardy is second personal foul, eight on the team. You wait for Northwestern. Aaron Jennings has been on the bench for an extended period of time. He was very effective for them early on in this half as he checks back in. But they've really struggled from behind the arc as Indiana has done a very good job of sagging off, and the shooting has gone south so far in the last five or six minutes for Northwestern. So Jared Odell at the free throw line. Makes good on the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. Let's take a look at the AT&T long distance game summary. And there's a look at it. Quick start from the field, but Northwestern has cooled considerably. Indiana holding the edge on the boards. And Jeffries carrying the mail here. Odell now with six points. Indiana's biggest lead of the night. Odell also six rebounds in the game. Good catch straight. Tried to force the pass to the corner, and in the passing lane was Kyle Hornsby who knocked it out of bounds. Very tough catch, very good catch by Drayton. Probably not a good passing decision by Blake, because what's he going to do with it once he does catch the basketball? Not in a position to score. Oh, Blake on the cut off the inbounds. Ten for Winston Blake, so they've accomplished that part of the, the uh, challenge. Get him on track, get him on track early. Inside of two minutes to go. First half in Bloomington. Indiana trailed 17 to 6 early in this ballgame. Coverdale on the drive off the dribble. Tried to feed Newton, knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Jeff Newton. Good defense inside by Northwestern. Nice leave at the rim. But Newton committed a cardinal sin when watch it right here watch where he catches it and then he drops the ball down a little bit lower allowing Drake to rotate over and knock it off his foot. Good play by Drake. Drew Long again for three this time it's good. Sophomore out of Houston Texas and we begin to seesaw down the stretch of this first half. 
Northwestern on top by the slimmest of margins. Still plenty of time for Indiana to go inside. They are in the bonus situation as Northwestern has committed eight common fouls. Newton's trying to post down low. They overplay it. Dane Fife looking for room. Ten to go on the shot clock for Coverdale. Gets a high screen from Newton. Coverdale off the dribble. Fife gives up three. Coverdale just inside the arc. Had a partially blocked. Oh, on the putback. Well, that's what's supposed to happen on Seniors Day. The senior comes up big with eight points in the first half for Jared Odell. Indiana takes the lead in the final seconds of this first half. And we go to the American Century Halftime Report from Sports Center in game and our host, Mike Gleason. All right, thanks a lot, Wayne. If the Hoosiers get a piece of the title, Northwestern definitely they're going to make them work for it. Now, Penn State and Purdue got together in West Lafayette to tip off our triple header today. Big game for both of these teams as far as the Big Ten tournament is concerned. And, of course, Willie Dean looking to bring that scoring title back to West Lafayette. Let's see what transpired, and we'll pick it up with Willie Dean. Willie Dean with the breakaway and transition now. Double braids and all with the two-handed jam. Purdue up early, then Rodney Smith spots up. Finishes strong. Of course, he was uh, at recognition for the preseason, one of the preseason better players. Uh, he had that knee surgery in the offseason, but he finishes with 11 points. Purdue finishes with 60 second half points. Maynard Lewis with 17, Willie Dean with 16, John Allison with 16, Smith with 11. Willie Dean more than likely wrapped up that scoring title. And it's 92 57. Penn State will be the 11th seed at the Big Ten tournament. Uh, more of the American Century halftime report right after these messages. Even when a man has his toolbox handy, isn't it nice to turn to this all-purpose helper? The High Life man knows that if the pharaohs had duct tape, the Sphinx would still have a nose. We salute you, duct tape. You help a man get to Miller time. For four years, we were together every minute. Today, <laughs> we're spread out everywhere. But just get two of us on the phone, and there's a party going on. Introducing AT&T Unlimited. $19.95 a month for unlimited long-distance calls to any of AT&T's 50 million residential long-distance customers. Make all the calls you want, whenever you want. Plus, it's just seven cents a minute to anyone yeah, else. I know all your business. Let your long-distance be unlimited. Call 1-800-REACH-OUT to enroll. Welcome to the American Century Halftime Report. American Century, managing money for individuals and institutions for over 40 years. Well, things are wild and wacky in the Big Ten as far as the finish is concerned. The same can be said in the SEC East, where Florida, Georgia, and Kentucky are all in the thick of it. Although Kentucky dug themselves a hole earlier this week, losing to Vandy. But today, they can climb out of that hole in Rupp Arena, where they are hosting the Gators. Now, second half, under five minutes to go. Matt Bonner in the lane, hits the short hook. Nice shot. Gators up by two. Gerald Fitch, suspended last week. Boy, what a timely shot. Huge three. Kentucky by one. Matt Bonner with a three to tie. Oh, it was in, but it spins out. Oh, so Tubby Smith uh, pulls out a close 70-67 victory. Nelson with 23 and a losing cause. They both have identical 10-6 records, but uh, Kentucky's 20-8, and eight, and they get the bye. Florida's 21-7. and seven. They have to play in the first round of the SEC. Elsewhere, Cal and Arizona out in the Pac-10. It's 49-30. The Cats have to lose to Stanford up by 19 in this one. And Virginia Tech, Miami at 60-43, 14 minutes to go in that one. And Miami's looking for their 23rd win of the season. Northwestern and Indiana, they're at the half, game two, 33-32. It's a tight one from Assembly Hall. 
As you know, a large valve area makes for good breathing. That's why Volkswagen's Enhanced Turbo uses three intake valves and two exhaust valves to provide better fuel-air filling and improve gas discharge. Improved gas discharge. He's talking about the turbo getting good gas mileage. Now, let's discuss the intake valve camshaft timing, which can be adjusted... Volkswagen's enhanced turbo technology. It's not rocket science. Well, it is, sort of. This is our family business. Every day the whole thing comes to life all over again. We have to make sure that everything runs just right. We also have to watch costs. So being part of our electric co-op works for us, helps us get things done. It gives us more than electricity. It gives us power. And we shine as one. Welcome back to the American Century Halftime Report. More scores and highlights coming up, but first, this word from Indiana University. What defines excellence? It's all about learning. There are no limitations to the things you can do here. There are many things that join us together, even though every one of us is unique. The teachers have been incredibly supportive. Their excitement and love for their subject, you know, just spills over into the classroom. It's a challenge, but you can do it. There's just not a place better in the country. Indiana no, hours, University. Guys. Three hours. Excellent. Start at eight today. Actually, start at ten hours. Good afternoon, everyone. Scientists have been smashing atoms for decades, and some of that work has been done right here at the Indiana University Cyclotron. That kind of research is about to pay off in a big way for Hoosiers because the IU Cyclotron is about to be converted from a research facility into a life-saving medical clinic. The same protons that scientists have been studying for years can also be used to fight cancer in new ways. Some cancers are deadly because they're located in places conventional treatments cannot reach, like inside the brain. Indiana University is converting its cyclotron into a cancer-fighting medical facility named the Midwest Proton Radiation Institute. While work on the MPRI continues, there is also an effort underway to raise $5 million to build and support a home where MPRI patients and their families will stay during the treatment process. The home will be called Jill's House, dedicated to the memory of Jill Bierman, an Indiana University student abducted two years ago. By remembering Jill, organizers hope to provide a place of comfort for others who are suffering. People who are undergoing cancer therapy do much better if they have support. And when people are coming from a long way away from home, there's no support. They're away from family and friends and their church. They're alone, they're adrift. And when they have a place like Jill's house, where other people are going through the same thing, they comfort each other. Longtime Indianapolis resident Ken Beckley is the new president of the Indiana University Alumni Association. Beckley has been a familiar face to Hoosiers for many years, and he's eager to attract more alumni into the IU family. We are growing in diversity in our paid staff and our volunteer leadership. We're finding ways for students to get involved in the Alumni Association on all the campuses. We're finding ways for alumni to volunteer their service to the university through the Alumni Association. And very importantly, that we increase our dues-paying membership in the association. Riders in this year's Little 500 bike races will be pedaling for much more than glory. 
student leaders have announced they will use all of the proceeds from this year's races to set up three new scholarships in memories of the victims of the September 11th terrorist attacks. Three IU students lost fathers in the World Trade Center that day. Those three have helped set up criteria for what will be known as the 9-11 scholarships. They will be awarded every year on September 11th. And Indiana University scholars are using new technology to preserve ancient cultures. The IU School of Informatics has taken on a project called Clio, named for the Greek goddess of history. Scholars and students are using pictures, videotape, and computers to create digital libraries of endangered archaeological sites around the world. Thanks for joining us today and all season long here on IU Update. I'm Sandy mathis Rope for Indiana University. Quality education, lifetime opportunities. All right, Sandy, it's time now for our look at nourishing potential brought to you by Cargill. Indiana's Tom Coverdale, a one-time Mr. Basketball on the Hoosier State, has really come on this season. He lit up the state of Indiana as a shooting guard, now leads the Big Ten in assists while playing the point for Mike Davis. He's averaging over 12 points and five assists while knocking down 56 threes this year. Cargill, because the better we're fed, the more we hunger to achieve. Hoosiers were down 17-6. Now they're up one with 20 minutes to go, 33-32. At Advance, we believe in doing it yourself. So we made this commercial ourselves. Hey, Charles, what are you doing? Just getting ready to install a new battery out there for a customer. I see. <laughs> Pretty cool outfit. Wow, well, where'd you get those awesome goggles, battery guy? Funny. <laughs> battery guy walks the earth in search of a battery. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, battery guy. Bow before him. Pizza, the staple of the American mail, oftentimes served dangerously hot. To cool it, they use an age-old technique known as the reverse blow. The Rolling Rock continues the cooling process. It's good. Rolling Rock beer, grab a rock. Northwestern University. Exceptional academic opportunities. Two beautiful lakefront campuses. Outstanding faculty. Lifelong friendships. Northwestern University in Chicago. A symphony of success. It was a long couple of days. But I wouldn't change a thing You were there with me That's why I sang Welcome back to the American Century Halftime Report. American Century, managing money for individuals and institutions for over 40 years. It's time now for We Know You, brought to you by Sitco. Proud to support today's athletes. While wearing a Northwestern uniform, Evan Eshmar became the second all-time leading scorer for the Cats, a three-time All-Big Ten pick, and he was named an All-American in 1999. His third season, he was named the Cats MVP. Postseason tournament time in the Atlantic Sun Conference. Florida Atlantic, Georgia State. Leroy Davis, corner shot. He's got it. It's a three ball. Georgia State by four. And Ernest Crumbly with the nice penetration right here. And he kisses it off the window. And it's 40-37. Uh, Georgia State by three. Now it's by two. Second half, 11.52 to go. Boy, March Madness has arrived there, huh? NC State, Wake Forest. NC State already with 20 wins. Now trying to get 10 in the ACC. But uh, Wake Forest leads by three in the second half. And uh, David West gets 22 for Xavier. They pick up uh, their 22nd victory. They finish 22-6. and six. 14 conference wins, the first time in the history of the school. Jared Odell playing his final game at Assembly Hall. And it was Odell who gave the Hoosiers the one-point lead with the offensive bucket right there. The bow. Resistance becomes strength. Becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. 
This is Bowflex, an entire jam in one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout, 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real, the results are real, and you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. Cargill believes every person on this planet, big or small, is filled with potential. Every mind, whether it exists in wealth or poverty, has the ability to think great thoughts. Every idea is full of possibilities. To feed this potential, Cargill works each day at the complex job of satisfying the world's diverse appetite for food. Cargill, nourishing the potential in each of us. Slimmest of margins as we began to seesaw down the stretch of the first half. Along with Sean Morris, I'm Wayne Larrabee. Great to have you with us from Assembly Hall. And Sean, as you take a look at this particular uh, ball game, this entire first half, quick start by Northwestern, quick finish by Indiana. Indiana able to climb back in, Wayne, and actually take the lead because they're able to assert themselves down low. Odell and Jeffries go combine 6 of 11 from the floor. Take a look at the Volkswagen first half highlights. Northwestern got off to a quick start. It was Blake. Nice little dribble handoff from Drayton. Knocks down the three. And then Jennings, a nice story for Northwestern in the first half with seven points. Indiana really struggled with taking care of the basketball in the early going. But Jeffrey's able to assert himself. Nice job of creating space with the inside pivot. And then we talked about Jared Odell. Here he sends Indiana into the locker room with a lot of momentum off the miss from Coverdale. Indiana 9-0 when leading at halftime this season. There were two ties, three lead changes in the first half. Biggest lead, Northwestern by 11, 17-6. The biggest IU lead, a four-point advantage, 31-27. Indiana shot 37% for the first half. Northwestern, a good shooting performance based on what we've seen the last couple of games from them. And a couple of three-point field goals early got them off to a good start. Indiana opens the second half with its regular starting lineup with three guards, Coverdale, Hornsby, and Fife, and then Jared Odell and Jared Jeffries down low. Jeffries trying to establish position on Jennings. Ten to go on the shot clock. Odell unable to clear on the block. Now it's denied by Collier Drayton. Jeffries, oh, great look down low to Odell. Beautiful play by Jared Jeffries on the scramble situation. Did not panic, kept his head up. Nice leave at the rim. Indiana by three. Opening minute of play. Second half. Blake down low. Nicely done. Winston Blake with 12 points in the ball game now. He had a couple of three-pointers early. And that helped to open the back door just a little bit for Northwestern. Coverdale three. Blake was late in getting there. Coverdale a deep three. And a breakdown defensively for Northwestern. You have to find the three-point shooters for Indiana. Hornsby, Fife, and Coverdale, and make them put the ball on the floor. Indiana equals its biggest advantage of the afternoon, four points. Hardy around Fife, picked up by Jeffries. Takes him off the dribble into the lane. Tip from behind, and it's going to be on Kyle Hornsby, the foul, trying to help out Jared Jeffries. Northwestern tries to go inside with Tavares Hardy. Tough call right yeah, there for very, Indiana. Very tough for Indiana. Didn't see a whole lot of contact. Take another look at it right here. Jeffries does a good job of keeping his feet. 
think he got him on the left shoulder a little bit, and that's what Phil Boba called. Hardy missing on his first. Northwestern struggled last week against Illinois in terms of missing free throws. 13 of 30. 13 of the other. Minnesota. A pair of misses there. Coverdale against Winston Blake. Goes baseline off the dribble. <laughs> well, who said these Indiana got dribble? Smart drive by Coverdale. And a good job by Coverdale, Wayne, of using the rim. The 6'11 Jennings was rotating over. He couldn't get to the shot because of the heads he played by Coverdale. Quick move on the back door, blocked down low, believe Jeffrey's got it. On the drive by Collier Drayton. Turnover Indiana off the break. Blake back the other way. Hardy pulls up at the arc for three, and they needed that one. Tavares Hardy connecting. Well, you don't make two foul shots, go out and shoot a three, Wayne. <laughs> well, yeah, but he made the two foul shots. He'd have five points in the second half. <laughs> I'm sure that's what Bill Carmody said. Odell, and they don't guard him at the arc. Oh, stripped away from behind, but on the reach, the foul is on Jatim Young. First on Young. He is third in the Big Ten with 54 steals and almost had one there. Jeffries on the trigger of the inbounds. Coverdale gets by Jatim Young for two. Excellent sequence by Coverdale. He knocks down a three. He goes to the rim very effectively. Then a good use of the shot fake. When you're closing out on a shooter, you have to come out strong, but also under control. Young did not do the latter. Five-point lead, Indiana. To Tim Young off the dribble. And it looked like he got bumped by Coverdale that time. And Coverdale picks up his first personal foul, second on the team. A little over three minutes gone by, second half. Jason Burke comes in for Jatim Young, who's probably still bothered by that ankle. Missed a good portion of the first half with an ankle injury, had to get it retaped. When we talked about the injury problems that have plagued Jeffries, Northwestern battling some of their own. Vedran Vakuzic, a good-looking freshman, has not been able to play. He's been battling a shoulder separation that pops in and out. He has seen uh, no action today either. And did not play in Minnesota. Foul on Jared Jeffries, his second, third on the team. On the inbounds, Hardy inside. Couldn't finish in traffic. Fight clears to Coverdale. Indiana on the run. Coverdale three. Bring it up. That's just... Very, very poor transition defense by Northwestern. You can't let a guy like Coverdale go from the top of the key on the defensive end of the floor to the top of the key on the offensive end of the floor unobstructed and allow him to score up. He's going to kill you. Coverdale 10 of the 12 Indiana points here in the second half in the first four minutes of the second half, but he's also called for his second foul. He comes roughly 45 feet, Wayne. And no one from Northwestern contested. Look at there, there's not even a defender into the picture, allowing Coverdale to score up and knock down the three. Sean, when you're a guard out, out on the break like that, how do you determine what's a good shot from the arc and what isn't? Hardy, a long three there. Here come the Hoosiers. Take a look at the spacing and see if you have some offensive rebounders in case of a miss. And he obviously has the green light because he pulled up in transition. Nice job of coming under control by Coverdale. And he had Jared Odell on the block on that play. So he had somebody under the basket for him. Hornsby off that screen by Odell. Odell trying to keep it alive. Hornsby hits the deck. And a timeout called by Indiana. Good hustle by IU. They have brought the intensity to the floor here at the outset of the second half. Bill Carmody trying to fire his team back in at Mike Davis and company playing on an eight-point lead. To keep your business moving in the right direction, 
you need to make the best decisions about your image. Fast Signs offers sign and graphic solutions to make your choices simple. With locations coast to coast, Fast Signs is ready to keep your business moving. Fast Signs, sign and graphic solutions made simple. Call, click, or visit a Fast Signs location near you. Is there really a secret method twins use to communicate? Well, yes. It's called Speed Dial. Introducing AT&T Unlimited. $19.95 a month for unlimited long-distance calls to any of AT&T's 50 million residential long-distance customers. Make all the calls you want, whenever you want. Plus, it's just seven cents a minute to anyone else. It is weird, though. I come home at night, think of something that I want to call her about, and the next thing you know, the phone's ringing. Call 1-800-REACH-OUT to enroll. Sometimes the highly developed male will communicate via hand signals. We have the next game of billiards. Would you care for another rolling rock? A rock would be splendid. You want to play doubles? Uh, yeah, sure. Correction, make that four rocks. Well played. I'm excited. Me too. Rolling rock beer, grab a rock. NC State taking out Wake Forest. Craig Dawson, little penetration here with the dish, and it's Antoine Scott with the dunk. 54-50 now, Wake by four over NC State. Wayne? Thank you very much, Mike. Meanwhile, Indiana, five out of six shooting from the field at the outset of the second half. Coverdale has been at the uh, center of the storm. Well, he's done it in a variety of ways here. A poor job of rotating out. Allows the spot up three in the half court set. Here he does a fantastic job of using the rim to shield the defender Jennings. And here Northwestern does not find him in transition, and he makes Northwestern pay. Indiana enjoying its biggest lead of the afternoon, eight points. About four and a half minutes gone by in the second half. Hardy defending on Coverdale. Gets a screen from Odell. And now clears over Jennings. Tavares Hardy chases down. Twenty to go on the shot clock for Northwestern. Jennings bullet feed to Hardy, knocked out of bounds by Odell. Nice recovery by Odell there, deflects it out of bounds. Just over 15 minutes to go in this one. Indiana by eight on Seniors Day in Bloomington. It's staying focused on the ultimate goal. It's never wavering from a rigorous, time-tested investment strategy. It's knowing a highly disciplined approach can result in a winning performance. The American Century Value Funds. It's what we call American dedication. American Century Investments. Contact us or your investment professional. There are two basic ways to help protect you in an unavoidable collision. Attempt to insulate you from the unavoidable collision. Or try to redefine the word unavoidable. Test drive the BMW 5 Series today. Pint breakup. So you finally dumped him. Five NCAA championship banners hang high atop Alumni Hall here in Bloomington. Time now for a look at the Army of One brought to you by the United States Army. 1980-81 Indiana Hoosiers, Big Ten champions, national champs. They began the season a modest 10-7, and seven, but then won on a rip and won 16 of their next 18. 
team that included Isaiah Thomas, Randy Whitman, Landon Turner, Ted Kitchell, Jim Thomas. How do they start 10 and 7 with all that talent? <laughs> well, they, Bob Knight, of course, was the head coach. They rounded into form. And Wayne, if, uh, if you remember, if you take a look at Jim Thomas, they almost did not play that national championship game because of the assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan. Yes. President Reagan. Foul on Dave Fife, second to go. Second. Shot comes up short for Winston Blake. Blake fading back just a little bit on that shot as momentum carried him away from the rim. Indiana already five team fouls, Sean. We're just under 15 minutes ago in the game. It's not any single individual that's in trouble, it's the team. Coverdale delivers to Odell on the block. Kyle Hornsby, three. You cannot leave him open out there. His second triple of the game. Good job by Odell of looking weak side. Finds the spotting up Hornsby, but if you're Northwestern, that just flat out can't happen. You have to jam Hornsby, know where he is, make him put the ball. Same area code. Hardy inside draws contact and the foul on Jared Odell. Second on Odell and now the sixth on Indiana. Nice little sequence right there for Northwestern on the offensive end. Little bit of a curl cut coming off the block by Hardy. Good feed from up high, able to draw the contact. He'll shoot a couple. Bill Carmody's got his hands full trying to get his squad and keep his squad in this one. Tavares, who missed a couple of the line a moment ago, makes his first. Five second half points for Hardy, 13 in the ballgame. So he and Blake have come to the fore offensively as Northwestern needed. Now can the others pick up the slack? Coverdale on the curl. Well, they're really looking to pound it into Odo. And the overplay by Hardy, the foul is called his third personal. And Hardy got caught with that right hand across the waist. He was able to contest with the inside or left hand, but the official caught him wrapping up the waist. Non-shooting affair. Wildcats are third nationally in scoring defense. Fife knocked to the floor late by Jennings. Jennings picks up his third personal, third on the team. They hold teams to about 58 points a game. They are also pretty good at the arc. Northwestern 13th nationally in three-point field goal defense. But there is no such thing as free throw defense. <laughs> you can't defend your opponent at the free throw line. And Indiana, one of the better free throw shooting teams, and Dane Fife makes good on a pair. Indiana fifth in the Big Ten out of 11 teams in free throw shooting. And wait, let's see if Northwestern tries to attack the rim, get that seventh team foul on Indiana. They go right at the rim. Hardy on the putback. Blake missed inside, but Tavares Hardy cleans it up. Go right at the basket, Wayne, because if they're able to get that seventh foul on Indiana, they will be in the bonus situation with well over 13 minutes to go in this contest. Indiana's lead is nine. Bill Carmody mentioned what bothers Northwestern in this matchup is the length of Indiana. And not just with Jared Jeffries, but with Jeff Newton coming off that bench. And if they decide to go to Leach off the bench, good look there for Hornsby. Not that time on the three attempt. And here comes Northwestern. Well, you bring in Jeff Newton, you bring in uh, George Leach. Some pretty serious length. It'll belong to Northwestern, although the crowd disagrees here. And here comes Jeff Newton back into the lineup, and he'll get Jared Jeffries. And when you mentioned George Leach, he's among the uh, conference's leaders in shot blockers as well. He has not played here today. Ironically, in the first contest between these two teams, he sprained his ankle on the opening tip, didn't play the rest of the way. Jennings off the mark for that three attempt. Coverdale, quick feed into the post off the hand of Jared Odell. Tough pass for Odell to handle that quick bounce pass down low. 
tough pass and also came from a very difficult yeah. angle as well. And I think that's what Jared was saying to his uh, teammate. Tom covered it. You did not have an angle on that pass. What am I? I saw yeah, exactly. Get it. Give me something I can see. Let's go 90 degrees <laughs> next time. <laughs> Tough entry there. Trying to get on low to Hardy, and Odell stepped in front. There's the lead. Newton misses on the jam attempt, but Hornsby claims for Indiana. And now the Hoosiers run some offense. Seven and a half minutes gone by, second half. Well, they've got a mismatch down low with Newton and Blake trying to check him. And finally, they entered a new, and that's easy. Took them a while, but they were able to finally isolate it. Indiana by 11. And we're coming up on 12 minutes to go in the second half. You get the feeling this is a crucial juncture for Northwestern. Burke. Three. Tip by Hardy. A sensational follow by Tavares Hardy, who will not give up. Well, he just went straight up. One step went up. I thought he was going to gather it with two hands, but he <laughs> tipped it up with one. Just hammered that off the glass. Newton down low. Turnaround nicely done. Didn't finish. Kyle Hornsby in among the trees. Northwestern unable to clear on the defensive boards. Northwestern, one of the poorest rebounding teams in the Big Ten. Indiana again by 11. Good job by Fife of getting over the top of that initial screen. Blake is open for three. It'll belong to Indiana as the Wildcats go stone cold from the arc. They've had a couple of good looks from the outside, but they have struggled for points. Blake again gets an open look, but watch Hardy with one hand from the weak side, drilling it home off glass. This man may not bowl many strikes, but don't you think he's not still at the top of his game? His scores are not reflected in his average. His scores cannot be measured with hash marks and excess. Even between frames, he keeps his roller going. Here's to you, you old polecat. You keep on living the high life. People want to win. On Sunday, March 10th. They want those national championship banners. Everybody's playing their own game out there. Don't you kids get it? The first original motion picture from ESPN. Playing my game is what got you here. Brian Dennehy is Bobby Knight. I had to sit around for a year with a losing record. I'm not going to let you people do that to me. A season on the brink. Premieres Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Pinkock. Hmm. Chili. Spaghetti. Chili. Spaghetti. Steak and Shake. Famous for steak burgers. Wayne Larrabee, Sean Morris, welcome back to Indiana. Hoosiers leading by 11. Now let's take a look at Shooting the Rock, brought to you by Rolling Rock. Grab a rock. You can take a look at the difference in shooting between the two halves. Indiana really trying to establish themselves toward the end of the first half going inside and in the second half as well. That's reflected in the shooting percentage difference you see right there. Northwestern has not won in these environs since January 13th, 1968. That was before Bobby Knight got here. My goodness, that's before Assembly Hall. They've never won in this particular building. Indiana trying for its first Big Ten championship. It would be a co-championship, but their first Big Ten men's basketball championship of the regular season since 1993. Dane Fife, a senior, rims out. And the steal down low off the rebound by Donald Perry gets an open look for Coverdale. And over the back, Newton called for the foul. Jeff Newton, second personal. 
And the Wildcats are going to get an opportunity down the stretch here in the second half with 10.40 to go in the half. Indiana's over the foul limit, but Northwestern's weakness without question is at the free throw line where they rank at the bottom of the Big Ten. 60% overall, less than that in Big Ten play. And you're sending a, a free throw shooter and Collier Drayton who comes in converting about 58% from the charity stripe on the year. Collier Drayton though and to Tim Young who is limited here today. There's Jennings banging away at it. Jeffries finally clears. Obviously to Tim Young is limited by an ankle injury today or as far as we know. Jeffries for three. And there is Collier Drake, another good rebounding guard for Northwestern. Tavares Hardy to finish. Nicely done. 19 for Hardy, who continues to go right at the Hoosiers. And that's what you have to do against a shot blocker like Jeffries, Wayne. Don't fade away in the one-on-one -on -one situation. Make him make a decision, either back off or try to contest and give the foul. Jennings gave him the path to the rim. Jeffries second to the Big Ten and block shots. Newton, tough catch down low and conversion inside. Halfway through the second half, Indiana again leads by 11. Jennings has been very quiet since early going first half. He scored seven points in the first four minutes of the game and hasn't really been hurt from offensively since. Speaking of offensively, Northwestern not nearly as crisp in their half-court sets with movement of the ball or personnel like we saw in the first 12 or 15 minutes of this ball game. Jeffries caused that traveling turnover by basically tying up the basketball for a brief moment. Jared Jeffries on the defensive end. Meanwhile, Newton on the other end. This is not an easy catch here between defenders. How about that? Very tough catch, stayed with the play, but we saw his ability to catch the ball earlier. Even though he missed the dunk, that was a tough catch he made earlier in this half from Coverdale on the open floor as well. Coverdale drives on Jennings. Perry mishandles for a moment. Still 13 to go on the shot clock. Jeffries trying to establish on the block. It's Coverdale for three. Bring it. 15 for Coverdale, and Indiana extends to its biggest margin. 14-point lead, just under nine minutes to go. And when Northwestern looks at the tape, Wayne, one of the things that's going to really stand out is how many clean, open, uncontested standstill looks that the three perimeter players for Indiana were able to get. Hardy loses to Coverdale. Three on two if he wants it. Doesn't need three on two. Got a good look from the arc. Jeffries digs it out. No, but a foul. Indiana's bigs are starting to dominate now. Once again in transition, Coverdale not able to convert, but coming into your screen, number one, Jeffries takes the contact, and Indiana is really starting to assert themselves on the offensive glass. And Aaron Jennings, Sean, has picked up his fourth personal foul as Jeffries misses his first to the free throw line. Drew Long comes in, so Northwestern gets much smaller with the loss of Jennings to the bench due to foul trouble. And again, as uh, Coach Carmody mentioned before the game today, it'll be Indiana's length that really bothers Northwestern. You've got Jeffries and Newton both on the floor. Jeffries close to 6'10", Newton the same. Jeffries with nine points. Jared has struggled recently playing through that ankle injury, but averaging seven points in the last four games. Well off uh, the pace of his season, which was leading the conference in scoring with almost 17 a game. Blake woefully short. Hoosier's able to keep it in play. And both Blake and Coach Bill Carmody looking for the foul, not getting it. Jeffries whirling down low. Off glass, beautifully done. His first field goal of the second half, and Indiana extends to 17 points. Timeout Northwestern. Bill Carmody screaming at Phil Boba. Where was the call on the other side? He did not get it. Northwestern down big. Now let's take a moment to thank our Big Ten corporate partners. Cooper Tire, proud to be the official tire of the Big Ten Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. Worldspan, official travel distribution and technology provider of the Big Ten Conference. And Scudder Investments, translating opportunity.
Wayne Larrabee, Sean Morris, welcome back to Bloomington. Jared Jeffries inside. This is a tough shot here, high off the window. My goodness. Very tough shot because he had to shoot against his momentum, which was going to the left wing, and he was not able to square his body up to the rim. Not quite 100% off the uh, thigh and ankle injuries. He's been battling two leg injuries that have robbed him of some quickness and the explosiveness that makes him a special player. Jeffries out in front trying to break it up. Long chases down. Long into traffic. And the foul's coming up on uh, Perry. Smart play by Long on the scramble situation when he saw that he had Jeffries trying to check him about 35 feet away from the rim. He uses the dribble. Ball's almost thrown away, but he's able to turn the corner on Jeffries, and then he fakes and forces Newton to make a decision. He has to give the foul. And the foul is on Newton. It is his third personal. It is not on Donald Perry. Earlier this season, Phil Carmody said of Drew Long, he's one of the best athletes on this team. Last season, just six games for him before a foot injury ended his season. Took a medical redshirt. Long makes good on two. He's out of Houston, Texas, and just a sophomore. Tough road to hoe. Uphill battle for Bill Carmody in the Northwestern Wildcats trailing on the road at Indiana. There are two basic ways to help protect you in an unavoidable collision. Attempt to insulate you from the unavoidable collision. Or try to redefine the word unavoidable. Test drive the BMW 5 Series today. Big Ten Corporate Partners. Seven Up and your local Seven Up Butler. Make Seven Up yours. And Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, is it in you? Assembly Hall, Bloomington, Indiana. Seniors Day 2002. Wayne Larrabee, Sean Morris, nice to have you with us. A slow start by the home squad, but they have roared back, especially here in the second half. They led by the slimmest of margins at halftime and now have opened up a 17 or I should say a 15 point advantage. Northwestern just 5 of 18 at the arc. Indiana 7 of 23. Jeffries down low. Another tough shot didn't get the roll that time and they're going to score it inside. Jeff Newton will get credit for the field goal on goaltending against Northwestern. What's the call? Well wait a minute is it is it going to be goaltending or is it offensive basket interference? I believe that's the call. Offensive basket interference against uh, Indiana. So they. Oh, well, wait a minute. Wayne, he made the, the sign like it was going in. Like he's counting the basket. He must, they counted the basket. They must have called Jason Burke for being up around the rim. Well, that's a tough call. Yeah, it really is. And uh, they must have given the basket to Jared Jeffries. Because they had to make the call before the second shot attempt. And not only the toughness of the call, but the position from whence it came. Now it's a 17-point ball game. Eight to go on the shot clock. On the drive, Blake, the reach-in by Kyle Hornsby in the foul call. Second personal on Hornsby. It's nine on the team. And indeed, that looked like a tough call on the other end against Northwestern. Northwestern. 
last time these two teams met, Indiana did not make a free throw. Matter of fact, that was to Tim Young at the free throw line. He was the only Wildcat to shoot free throws that night. Kind of an odd occurrence. Winston Blake makes good on his first. One out of two. Newton cleans the board. Here's Coverdale. 16 point lead, Indiana. Oh, nice entry into Newton and the foul given by Winston Blake. You could see that play developing from the moment they got over half court. Newton sat up on that left block. He had uh, Blake isolated on him. Watch him use his body. He's down low and Blake has no choice but to give the foul. So Indiana shot just two free throws up at Evanston and they go back to the line once again. Newton missing on his first. I had a feeling before the Big Ten tournament next week at Indianapolis, some uh, <laughs> some of these guys are going to be shooting free throws, and a lot of them. Jeff Newton, who came in with a streak of 15 in a row, makes his second free throw here. Today, he is five out of eight at the free throw line. Indiana again by 17, inside of seven minutes to go. Jatim Young. And he was bumped by A.J. Moye. Moye's first personal. That's 10 on the team, so Northwestern in the double bonus. And Jatim Young heads to the line. Yet to score here today. Second leading score coming in at almost 13 points a game. And as I mentioned, one of the top offensive rebounding guards in the Big Ten. Coming into today's game of his 210 career rebounds, 105 are on the offensive glass in his career at Northwestern. And the sophomore puts in on a pair. As a matter of fact, he's the second leading rebounder overall for Northwestern from their guard spot, Drayton number three. Trying to trap in the backcourt, Coverdale moves it across, but a bump by Jatim Young. I believe that's who Tom Rucker has on the call. Jim second personal. Six on the team now. Coverdale on the inbounds. Coverdale right back to Odom. Oh, here's a beautiful lead. Hardy for the Tomahawk Jam. Well done by the Northwestern Wildcats, Winston Blake. Nice job by Blake right there, Wayne, of keeping his head up. If he's dribbling with his head down. He doesn't see Hardy in a nice delivery in the open floor. 13-point lead, Indiana. Do the Wildcats have a run in them? We'll see. Good move by Coverdale. He lost everybody in that baseline drive. 17 for Tom Coverdale. The junior from Noblesville, Indiana. Drew Long. Tavares Hardy. Nice move around Odell for the jam. Outstanding move because that little inside pivot, Wayne, forced Odell to react. The shot fake allows the path to the basket. Inside of six minutes to go in the game. Northwestern within shouting distance, down by 13. Jeffries. Tough shot. Oh, man. Hardy right with him. 15 for Jeffries. Well, Jeffries yesterday told me that ankle's getting a little bit better by the day, and it looks much better today. Long trying to slip to Hardy, knocked away by Odell. On the floor, it's going to belong to Indiana. As Jason Burke was unable to rein it in at the sidelines. Jason Burke leaves and Drew Long back on for Northwestern. And again, as uh, Sean, as you mentioned, Vedran Vakusic, a key substitute for Bill Carmody's team, unable to play for the second game in a row off a shoulder injury. They're hoping to have him for the Big Ten. Big Ten tournament. Jeffries steps back for three just short. And Hardy to the floor gets a timeout called, or does he? Yes, he does. 
4.55 left to go in this one. Indiana leading by 15. Is there enough time for Northwestern? Bill Carmody is planning the comeback as we speak. Let's take a moment to thank our Big Ten corporate partners. 7-Up and your local 7-Up Butler. Make 7-Up yours. And Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, is it in you? Wayne Larrabee, Sean Morris. Capacity crowd on hand for the final regular season game of the Big Ten season. Mike Davis <laughs> would think he's behind by 15. He is the coach who is ahead. There are the uh, standings. All we know from the tournament is that Wisconsin has the top seed. Northwestern is locked in number seven. And Penn State is the 11th seed of the uh, tournament coming up, which begins play at Tensico Fieldhouse on Thursday. Boy, we're all looking forward to heading down there. And that's a, a fantastic uh, brand new facility, but uh, one that is steeped in the tradition of Indiana basketball. New to look old. How about that? Great place for basketball. Hardy. Blake, deep three. Nope. They have been frigid from the arc here in the second half. One triple is all she wrote for Northwestern in the second half. Total on the lead from Coverdale. Well done. And maybe a little bit of fatigue sneaking in on Northwestern. They did not run the floor very well. Odell did. Coverdale rewards him. 17-point advantage, Indiana. Hardy from three-point land and beyond. What a game he's having. 26 points for Tavares Hardy. That was from Ellettsville. Yes. Or maybe Merrillsville. Hacked out of bounds by Hardy. It'll belong to Indiana. 71-57, the Hoosiers on top, playing for a piece of the Big Ten title. Somebody asked, Mike Davis said, hey, you know, it does the fact that you might share it with four different teams diminish the meaning of the Big Ten regular season championship? He said, he used this analogy. He said, what if somebody hit the 100 million Powerball and there were 50 guys who held the ticket? Wouldn't even feel bad about that? <laughs> Same difference, he said. We'll feel great about it. It'll be a Big Ten championship that'll be celebrated here in Bloomington. You wouldn't turn down that uh, Powerball ticket, would you? No, I certainly would not. The block down low. Hardy and uh, Jason Burke collapsing on uh, Jared Jeffries. Whirling into the lane. A whirling dervish is to Tim Young. And a foul coming up on Young, I believe. Offensive foul on Young. He was out of control going through the lane. A little bit of frustration there by Jatim Young. He's really been thwarted offensively. Third personal on Jatim Young. Bill Carmody has not liked many of the calls he's gotten here, but watch this lead. Coverdale, oh, up high on Seniors Day for two. Another do-it-yourself commercial from Advance Auto Parts. At Advance, we stock a lot of parts. Who cares if we don't have the one you need? Robbie Cam will demonstrate we do. Robbie, distribute for a 92 T-Bird. Find it, go! Got it! Fetch me a locking hub for an 87 Wrangler. Check! Fuel injector for a 75 Dodge Charger. 75 Charger doesn't have fuel injectors. Correct! Proof that at advance, the best part is our people. Who's your daddy? The beer we make here matters to people. This beer is part of their lives. People talk with friends over this beer. They spend time with family with this beer. It's there to witness their defining moments and will always be there when these stories are told again and again. It makes those moments more memorable. This beer makes those times Miller time. Cargill believes there is potential in each of us. And as our lives unfold, that potential is transformed into human accomplishment. The food we eat to nourish our bodies and minds has much to do with what we make of our lives. Every day, Cargill works at the complex job of satisfying the world's diverse appetite for food. Cargill, nourishing the potential in each of us. Atlantic Sun Championship from Orlando, Lamont McIntosh with the shot, doesn't go down, and guess what? Georgia State loses 76-75. Florida Atlantic is going dancing, Wayne. 
All right, thank you, Mike. Let's take a look at our best plays of the game. Brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. And the story in the second half for Indiana has been Tom Coverdale. He came out on fire from behind the arc. Also in transition, able to spot up and knock down three for some of our Advanced Auto Parts best plays of the game. And I go back to Mike Davis, uh, him mentioning, of course, obviously Jared Jeffries is the star of this team, but perhaps the key is Tom Coverdale. And he's had a couple of rough games at Michigan State and at Illinois with some unfortunate occurrences down the stretch in both of those games that he was involved in. Unfortunately, uh, that's going to happen when you're at the point of the attack as he is, and he's a tough kid and, and able to handle the adversity. Come back today with a big second-half performance. Scored 10 of the first 12 points for Indiana in the second half and beats the clock nearly. Able to convert on that tray attempt, a runner. Here comes Burke. He was pushed on the play and a foul coming up. Pushed by Fife, his third. And when you talked about Coverdale and mentioned some of the struggles the last couple of games, I tell you what, I had a ton of respect for that young man before, but it even increased when you read his post-game comments. He said, hey, I didn't make the plays. I made some mistakes. You don't see that on the professional level where people are willing to accept professional responsibility and personal responsibility a lot of times. A lot of gumption by that young man. Absolutely, and he is the leader, there's no doubt. Now Drew Long back on for Northwestern. Wait, I, I figured out what I would do with that $50 million lotto ball. Yeah. The first thing I would do is I would hire Hoosier native John Mellencamp to play a personal concert, and I would invite you. That'd be great. I, I certainly accept. I'd make room for that on the schedule. Five blocked by the hustle town low. My goodness. That was Lewis. Inside Burke on the bank. Drew Long, I should say, on that block on the other end, set it up, and now technical foul is called. And it's called on Dane Five. Well, what a big swing right there, and it starts on the defensive end. When you talked about the athleticism of Drew Long, he doesn't give up on the play, blocks the shot, leads to the open floor conversion opportunity for Burke, and then Fife, in frustration, draws the technical. Take a look at it, end to end right here. You see Long timing his jump. That's just a great athletic play. Then runs the floor. Take a look at it right here. Comes in, uses the left hand. There is some contact after the block, which is probably what Fife is upset about, but it leads to a transition opportunity and conversion for Burke. And suddenly it's an 11 point ball game. We still have 2.40 to go in the game. The officials are conferring. You see them right there. Principally Tom Rucker and Phil Bova. So what you're probably going to see, Wayne, is that Burke was fouled on that conversion opportunity. He'll shoot. Or they're going to shoot the technical. They first. will shoot the technical first, and that would be Drew Long at the line. They will shoot a technical first, although they're going to let Jason Burke shoot the technical. Well, it looks like they're calling one shot. Right. This is this is the conversion. You're right. Western's going to get the ball on the side anyway. Off the technical foul. But you're right, this is just the uh, conversion for the three point play. And there it is. Now they'll. And then the technical was called against five number 11. They called the uh, foul an intentional technical foul, which gives you possession automatically following the technical foul shot. Now Drew Long shoots the free throw. This is the technical. And he gets one more. So suddenly this becomes a single digit lead for Indiana. But Wayne, right there, even though Long missed that second free throw, that's a seven-point swing. Yeah. The two points the two on the other end of the take block. Away. Six point swing, rather. But they take away on the defensive transition. The conversion over here. It's a six-point swing. Could have been a seven-point if he made both free throws on the team. Collier Drake. Travel the call there on Blake. 
turnover Northwestern they could ill afford that just under two and a half to go in the game nine point lead Indiana one thing about these Wildcats they have not made seniors day a walk in the park for the Hoosiers Indiana right now played out exactly they can milk the clock be patient go inside and force Northwestern to react Jeffries trying to post being fronted at the moment by Hardy Coverdale and I think we've got a hold is it on Hardy it's on Hardy they Hardy. get Tavares Hardy fighting for position with Jared Jeffries and that's doubly painful if you're Northwestern because you take a look at when that foul was called 10 seconds on the shot clock so right now Indiana will go to shoot a one and one well, they changed the call they called the foul apparently on Winston Blake holding on Jared Odell and so Hardy has still three personal fouls. Blake picks up his fourth, and Odell makes his first of two at the line. My mistake, I thought I saw the signal of 33. I did, too. I, I agree with you. It looked like the mechanics of the official was for 33 at the scorer's table. Apparently not when Odell went to the line. And you're right, because Tavares Hardy and Jeffries were battling for position down low. Now Jason Burke, Indiana, back to an 11-point lead. Blake trying to go quickly. Hardy for three. And the three ball, and there's a foul right there with the elbow. Kyle Hornsby comes down, throws the elbow into Jatim Young. There, that was an easy call right there. We'll take a look at it on the miss. Hornsby gathers, and he turns, leads with that elbow. And you're right, Wayne, that's a call the official had to make. Watch this here. Player control foul, so it does not precipitate free throws. Now, Winston Blake comes up hopefully short. Drew Long inside. Drew Long's made a couple of plays here this afternoon off the Northwestern bench. Inside, coming up on a minute and a half to go in the game. Indiana's lead is nine. And Coach Joe Carmody begging for his team to give the foul. No one's responding. Here it is now. Burke reaching in. And Bill Carmody wanted it a lot sooner than that. A minute 26 to go in the game. The foul is coming up on Jason Burke. It's his third. Nine on the team. Take a look at the BMW Ultimate Drive of the game right here. And once again, it's Tom Coverdale. He's done an outstanding job. Because of his three-point shooting, Northwestern has to close out. They don't do it under control. And Tom Coverdale makes them pay with the BMW Drive of the game. Coverdale at the free throw line, 17 points, 15 of which have come here in the second half. Early foul trouble on Coverdale at Illinois on Tuesday night limited him to 13 points. And he misses the front end of the one and one. And Northwestern not giving up on it by any stretch. Out of the corner, long for three, ring that. And a quick timeout, Northwestern. 11 for Drew Long off the bench. A minute 18 to go, it's still a game. Today's Big Ten game has been brought to you by American Century, managing money for individuals and institutions for over 40 years. Sitco, at Sitco, we enjoy basketball as much as you do. Sitco, we know you. BMW, test drive, the ultimate driving machine at your local BMW center. Cooper Tire, proud to be the official tire of the Big Ten Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. And by AT&T Long Distance, let your long distance be unlimited. In the last 427, a 13-4 Northwestern run capped by this basket. Drew Long, big off the bench for Northwestern. Looked good shooting that, able to get his feet set. Cuts Indiana's lead to six. Drew Long came in and played in 22 games. One start, averaging three points a game. Jeffries on the inbound. And a quick foul now stopping the clock with a minute 16 to go. And both teams are in the double bonus. Foul. 
foul is on Collier Drake. The second personal foul. And Wayne Hornsby, not as good a foul shooter as you would expect from someone who is so efficient from behind the three point line. Only about a 63% foul shooter. And he makes good on the first here. Indiana's lead now seven. Drew Long to underscore his contribution today, averaging just 10.7 minutes a game coming into today's action. A split at the free throw line. And A.J. Moyer is not going to let Drew Long catch the basketball. To Tim Young, in close, left it short. Point blank missed there by Jatim Young. And therein probably went the hopes of Northwestern in this game. Foul coming up before that last shot attempt. Let's take a look at the American Century on the money. Player of the game. We've been talking about him a lot here in the second half. It's that young man right there, Wayne. Take a look at his productivity. The vast majority of that in the second half is Indiana was able to build on their one-point halftime lead. The foul on Jatim Young to stop the clock was against Coverdale, who buries his first free throw. 18 now for Tom Coverdale. He scored in double figures down 13 Big Ten games. 19 points for Coverdale. 63 seconds to go, and it's a nine-point lead for Indiana. Now here comes Drew Long. Northwestern spaces the floor to Tim Young. Long leaning in comes up short. Solid play there made by A.J. Moye, and then as the rebound is grabbed by Coverdale, he's fouled right away. Well, Moye was brought into the game a couple of possessions ago, Wayne, for one simple reason, to find, locate, and stop Drew Long. He did an outstanding job right there, forcing him to catch the ball out wider than he wanted to. Long tried to create contact, wasn't able to do so. Good defensive sequence by A.J. Moye. Drew Long picks up his uh, first personal foul. Coverdale back to the free throw line. Indiana 9 and 1 here at home this season. Their only loss was against Wisconsin. And that's a game in which Jared Jeffrey sat out with a thigh and ankle injury. And a game that had they won, and they came close to winning, and it was Coverdale had an opportunity to win that ball game. That this game would basically be for nothing today, that they will have would have clinched the Big Ten championship. That's been the type of year it's been in this league, Wayne, where one shot, one possession, it's so wide open, the conference co-champions are going to have five losses. Moyer, the rebound, able to clear it in a hurry. And this one's going to go into the win column for the Indiana Hoosiers. Moyer able to move it across. And it looks like Northwestern's going to let the time run. And we get a timeout call by the officials, an official's timeout. Fife is going to check back in for Moye. Make it an Indiana timeout. The seniors are going to get a round of applause here as they come out. And that would be Jared Odell and Dane Fife. So, 30-second timeout. And the seniors get an ovation with 27.3 remaining in Indiana leading by 10. With this Big Ten championship today, although it is a co-championship, it doesn't matter. Goes in the books as a championship. It'll be the 20th for Indiana. One behind their arch rival, the Purdue Boilermakers. Big Ten championship trophy has spent a lot of time in the state of Indiana over the years. Inbounds Odell knocked away. Stolen by Jason Burke. Sets up Winston Blake. Rebound knocked out of bounds and will belong to Indiana, I believe. No, it's going to belong to Northwestern. Northwestern basketball. And here comes Jared Jeffries out. Is this his last game day appearance in Indiana? We'll know a little bit later in the year. Jared Odell, X 
exclamation point. A senior exclamation point. Time winding down on this one. It'll be Northwestern basketball with 7.1 remaining, and Jared Odell holding the arms in the air. It took four long years, and he really did not become the player they thought he'd be until the outset of the Big Ten season when he scored a double-double at Northwestern at the start of the Big Ten campaign. And that got him on his way to a very productive conference season. 16 points, 10 rebounds today. Double-double for Jared Odell. Sixteen points, fifteen rebounds at Northwestern, and he nearly matched those numbers today. And this one is in the books. The 20th Big Ten regular season basketball championship for the Indiana Hoosiers. Congratulations to the Hoosiers. 11-5 Big Ten season for Sean Morris, Wayne Larrabee. So long from Assembly Hall. Dear sir.